My name's Jack Larry, this is for Pierce Glavin, senior project video. Glad to be here. Do you want to redo that? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm gonna need a stunt double. All right, let's do my check. Cinnabon, Cinnabon. Where's the... <laughs> Wait, I got a ping, 32.6 meters northwest. Oh, Benjamin. That was, all right, I'm gonna redo that. You're good, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm big. We'll go really early today for some reason. Don't know why. Thought I had like the best design for that. None of it. <laughs> None of it worked. Somebody's gonna blurt out E and everybody's gonna get really hype. Good morning. Good morning, Doc. <laughs> and then he took a piece and I took his piece and it was like, oh. oh. Flip it, you're holding it upside down. Yeah, Sweet. <laughs> Somehow it was opened, it was on the floor. The goldfish. Magical. What does the class of 2020 mean to you? I didn't know what it meant to really enjoy coming to school until I came to Haverford. This year, it was literally like every kid was my best friend. It was nothing like I could ever experience where I had such a close relationship with every dude that I felt on a personal level, I could come to him with anything. It means like everything. It's like a place of like happiness that like I probably wouldn't have found anywhere else. I grew up with three older sisters, um, so I always wanted a brother. Um, and when I came to Haverford, you know, this whole brotherhood and all the 112, I think, uh, boys that I, I got to meet kind of filled in that gap in my life. I think that they've been the perfect blend of uh, hard work and good, clean fun. And there's just like an energy and a camaraderie in this group that is unusual. I'm at my old school. I was never really that close with any of the people there. Um, and at Harvard, I've been blessed that I've been able to have some kind of connection with pretty much every single person. They were good friends and wonderful gentlemen. They worked hard, they were thoughtful, they were kind, and they meant a lot to the middle school. Just years and years of endless humor and entertainment. This room is just oozing with averageness. <laughs> Why are we not jumping in a jacket? <laughs> there was never a day where I went to Haverford and did not laugh. When I think about who I am and who I've become, it's so much because of my friends and the teachers that I've met. And basically just, you meet so many different people at Haverford. You know, some people sometimes think that Haverford just all the kids are the same and they couldn't be more wrong. I was trying out a bunch of different teaching strategies, ways to get to know you guys, ways to deliver material in interesting and engaging ways. And there were so many moments that I just felt like this is, this is working. This is amazing. And some of that is just getting more comfortable in the classroom. But a lot of that is, the warmth and, and welcoming nature of that, this class of 2020 that I was able to grow into. I really feel like they're more sons to me. Um, you know, I just have this, this, this immense appreciation um, and gratitude. Jackie Mama! <laughs> And the class of 2020 is, is, is a real gift. So the class of 2020 uh, is important to me for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a, a senior class for my son's experience as a freshman. And I think this class did an outstanding job setting a positive tone and really making the upper school a place where my son was happy to go to school every day. And the leadership, uh, I couldn't have asked for better leaders. I would say that each student kind of excels in a different aspect of school. So whether it's on um, the lacrosse field or the football field or even the robotics room um, or even in the classroom, every student has a different capability and um, collectively as a group we're very talented. Being a part of the class of 2020 has really come to mean to me being part of a brotherhood. Uh, I no longer consider my fellow classmates just classmates or even peers. I consider them my brothers. All the guys in our class have been so supportive and so uh, they're always I always get a lot of guys checking in on me when before the virus everyone was coming through saying hi, spending time with me and it really means a lot. I watch a lot of movies and you see like Good Will Hunting and you're like, eh, no one's really like that. And then you meet, you know, Alexander Greer or Toby Ma and you're like, oh, okay, okay, 100% get that. Because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're special people in the best possible ways. They are, you know, like just, 
intellectually gifted, and that, that's not even like the iceberg. That's like everyone in our entire class. I feel like there's so many, so many people who are really talented in many different things, whether that be academics, sports, music, or arts. Uh, but we really all come together when we have to, and we all really care about each other and support each other in everything we do. I mean, obviously, it's been a great overall class. Like there hasn't, I can't remember any time where I've had any problems with like any of my classmates. You guys um, are an amazing group. Um, you're remarkable in many ways. Um, your leadership, your outstanding leadership, and your positive presence around school um, has been uh, truly extraordinary. Um, and I have to say that this positive presence is um, a source of inspiration for me and has been uplifting for me. And it is one of the main reasons why the class of 2020 will always occupy a special place in my heart. How do you think the class of 2020 differs from the other classes you have seen? It's a very basic tenet uh, that some classes miss on the way out the Haverford door towards ambition and greatness and glory. They miss the idea of what actually makes up the brotherhood. This class was kind to each other, empathetic, and most importantly, they were friends. Uh, I was blessed to know this class on multiple uh, levels, from the soccer team, uh, where I had an incredible group of servant leaders, um, maybe the best group of soccer players that I have uh, had a chance to coach uh, in many years at the Haverford School, uh, to my English classes, where I had incredible scholars who worked their way through material and never, uh, never chipped at each other, never had an element of sarcasm or one-upsmanship that has sometimes uh, at the highest levels of uh, academic achievement at the Haverford School. We kind of changed the culture into love, you know, and just love everybody and just, you know, be in the moment and, you know, be with your friends. It's the ability for anyone in this class to go up to anyone else in this class and know that he's going to have someone he can talk to or he's just going to have a friend he can hang out with. It doesn't even have to be that heavy. It's just like everybody's sort of cool with everybody. Everybody fits into their own niche pretty well. Um, you know, not everybody is a star athlete or uh, an incredible singer. You know, a super artist or anything like that. Um, everybody falls into their own niche and, uh, you know, has their group of, group of friends, but I think that at the same time, everybody can, you know, move between groups and uh, really make lasting impacts in the community. You know, we, we always try and celebrate the best in each of our classmates. It's really a, a sense of pride that we feel and I know every, everyone else in this class feels when we see one of our brothers, one of our classmates, succeeding in what he loves to do, what he excels at, what's unique to him. Everyone was willing to, I guess, in some ways put their pride aside like some classes wouldn't and just really relate to those younger guys and help them really get the full Haverford experience. I think that that's definitely set us apart as a class. Obviously, every Haverford student is taught to embody the virtues essential to the school, but I think that for us, for the class of 2020, those ideals, those elements of character are just intrinsic. They've also begun numerous initiatives at the school in the diversity and inclusion program, the global studies program, the arts programs, and they're leaving Haverford a better place for future classes. Everyone in our grade is a leader in their own way. It doesn't have to be like class president or, but like everyone's there for each other and it's like if you need to look up to someone, you can just look up to anyone around you. But I feel like everyone at our school is good at like a single thing and they're like really driven at it. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's like sports or school or, um, you know, robotics or something like that. I feel like that's pretty different than other classes, um, just because everyone um, is in their own space. Honestly, I think we're just like a really well constructed puzzle. Like everybody has a like everybody has a spot. Like there's just all these little bits of talent, and kind of when it all comes together, you know, it just really makes such a wonderful and great class. Everybody's looking to help everybody out. Um, I think that we do a great job of picking each other up and uh, supporting each other. I mean, everywhere, like playing fields or acting or whatever it is, everybody's everybody's there for everybody. I think I really started to notice it around maybe third, fourth grade, 
you could see that we kind of held ourselves to a very high standard, which kind of garnered us a lot of respect from teachers, peers, people in other grades. And I think that's something that's really hard to do in general. So the fact that we were able to do it that early um, was really important, which I think has kind of just made us stronger. I mean, as you move through the schools, so as you go from lower to middle and from uh, middle to upper, those are huge times of transition, yet I think how close and how kind of, not necessarily calculated, but how like well-mannered our grade is, we were able to make the transition smooth for everyone and it kind of just helped us all the way through high school. Every kid in the class 2020 is just so respectful, whether it's to an adult, someone their age, someone below them, it's like the same thing. They treat everybody the way they want to be treated. I feel like every kid like felt, all right, this is my duty. This is what I got to do. And this is like my responsibility. And so I think like they held up to that. And so there's no, when you think of like what 2020 means, there's no negatives, which I think really separates you from the uh, other classes. There have been some truly great classes to walk the halls of Haverford before the class of 2020. So it gave this group of young men two choices as I see it, to either hide and avoid the expectations that lay all around them or to reach for it, challenge it, and what was most definitely the case for the class of 2020, to surpass it. Is there a particular word or phrase that you think defines the class of 2020? I think above all else, loyalty. Definitely the, um, you know, at no point will anybody in this class leave anybody behind. You know, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what the kid's going through. Um, I don't know if it's calling it probably too strong. Um, I mean, it's like kind of like everything that especially me and probably most kids in our class. Um, it just shows how much we can support one person who's going through a lot right now and shows how our class kind of is bonded together. And our class like loves each other and will always be together. Probably brotherhood. Just back, back to the point of how everyone was so supportive through all I've been through and stuff like that. It just really feels, especially the football team and through our season and stuff like that, it just feels like we were all brothers. I mean, if I had to think about it in one word, the class of 2020, I'd probably use the word dynamic, right? Because there are singers, there's actors, there's athletes, and so many of you guys, there's students, and so many of you guys do all of those things, right? You sort of shift from place to place there's no sort of singular definition for what a member of the class is. It to be a broken record, but probably versatile. Or you can go anywhere. If you, need, if you need something, some kid in the class of 2020 will be able to do it for you. I think of the word intellectual because, like, I'm, I'm just, like, thinking back to how, like, the, the I don't know, like Chow had this term sophomore year, quest for knowledge, that, <laughs> that we were that we were all on during free periods, like um, playing chess or solving crossword puzzles uh, or like doing sporkle, jet pong, stuff like that. It's all, it's all like very, I guess a little bit nerdy stuff, but like I, I like to think of it as more intellectual and like a quest for knowledge. In Haverford, everyone, um, you know, they sort of plant their seed, they take their own path, but everyone grows together in the same pot. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter how you do it, but I think that we also help each other grow. In a word, the class of 2020 is in. And I say that because um, whenever you guys get involved in things, you're all in. You buy in. Love. Um, I would say friendship, but I just don't think that kind of quite captures it because it's way deeper than that. It's not just like a hello in the hallway. It's kind of... Every part of our class and every people, every person in our class is so kind of loves one another and cares about each other in a special way. Gregarious would be would be mine. I mean, they're they're joyfully gregarious. When they get together and decide to do something, they really uh, they really do it well. I mean, we've seen performances, we've seen athletically. Um, these guys are awesome, and and they'll be missed. I would say happiness. Whenever I walk through the Haverford doors, it's always a good vibe, no matter what happens. Everybody around is always just smiling at you. Everybody gets a hello, everybody gives a hello. It's a very comfortable vibe all around the school, and I would say that just whenever I showed up to Haverford, I was always the happiest person I could be, so. Emotional, but in like a good way. Like we're, we're very empathetic. 
towards the other people in our classes? Uh, I would describe the 2020 class as E because that is probably the, the word that everybody says the most if you if you were to like make a list, like a one of those things where the, the word that's said the most is biggest and then the other words are smaller, it would right. be E would be the biggest because it kind of just means anything we want it to be and we all know what it means. Our grade might not have created it, but we really kind of embraced it. The bond we have, like it's all, it's all love and it's all respect and it's all, it's all admiration. And it's just like, we all really just want the best for each other. We all really have like that love for each other. You know, there's no other word you can really describe. I'd probably just say family, just cause we're all so close. I don't know, I think lead by example is a good one. Like a lot of classes is like, you know, give like great speeches or whatever and talk, but we just kind of like, we show out for the games and we like do things the right way. I was thinking it's probably just for the boys. Just people, people will just kind of take that attitude and just kind of everything's kind of a together and no, no one's really doing anything really just for themselves. It's always kind of a, a collective effort. And I think everyone's just kind of going in there with that, that attitude, that mentality. I feel like we all have a sense of like care for each other. And I, I feel like we really saw that when, when, when Jack got sick, like, not a single member of the member of the community kind of hesitated to get involved and help. Can you share a moment or story that stands out and embodies our class? Beating Malvern in football at Malvern and then storming the field in Halloween costumes. The extraordinary basketball senior night where we paid tribute to Jack Cloran and his strength and his courage, number two strong. And then finally, carousel. The dress rehearsal was the opening night and the closing night and there was something poignant and beautiful and all together in a way that felt supportive and that demonstrated everything that I think is best about this wonderful class. Yeah, Mrs. Cloran and I um, addressed um, the class of 2020 um, to let you guys know about Jack's diagnosis um, when we all got together in Ball Auditorium. Um, you know, like maybe a lot of you, um, you know, that, you know, I kind of had an, you know, out of body experience, you know, I was just so emotionally just all over the place and I felt like I was floating and, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys myself because of who you guys are to me and what you guys mean to me and I wanted you to hear it from from me and from Jack's mom um, and just looking out into the seats at ball and all 105 110 eyes um, were looking into my eyes and I could just feel the love that you had then and still have for Jack. The, the two strong night. Um, I think it's one of the most memorable, uh, memorable nights for all of the seniors, but I was in the front row right next to Jack and I was like next to Toll. And then we did like our first chance for the seniors, right? When they're announcing them. And oh my God, like I went to almost every home game, um, basketball home game with uh, Haverford. Like our chants are good, like the, but the student section was like never filled up, but we didn't have enough um, space to fill in the students. So like that first chant, so after I think Matt McKenna was uh, announced first, They're like Matt McKenna, like three times, always three. Always three. Always three. But then I looked over to Pat and I'm like, holy crap. That was crazy. Ford's basketball senior night, um, it, it was just so special. And um, like I get goosebumps talking about it. And um, uh, Coach Dawson uh, said it uh, like the morning after, a couple mornings I was talking to him. He goes, like this, this reassures me coming to have for to know like that like you guys bond over something like that. Even though I wasn't necessarily a part of it, but that was so pretty special like to me was the musical uh, Carousel this year uh, and it's like thinking back like that was like the last time that I was on campus like other than for picking up my diploma uh, for the 
for the foreseeable future, I think. And I thought it was like really cool to see how many seniors showed up uh, for that one night of performance that you know was just supposed to be a dress rehearsal turned into the real thing. And it's like through all the uncertainty, like whether or not we were actually ever going to be back on campus, like sitting in the first like three rows that were just filled with kids and uh, from the kids in the class of 2020. I feel that was that was pretty cool. So I did a carousel this year, which was my first uh, my first um, like drama or acting performance. And um, I remember it was the opening night. It was that Thursday, and you know I guess kind of leading up to that, you know I got to spend a lot of great time with some of the seniors, and you know some like doing it with some of the other seniors who had never done acting before, and it was just a really great time to you know get to know them better and you know do something that I've never done. And then uh, on opening night, I remember before we started the show, I remember a really good group of friends of mine were kind of in those first couple rows. So, you know, it was really great to um, see their faces and know that they were um, <clears throat> cheering us on there. So that was really nice. Junior year, when um, my brother died, uh, I had wasn't sure who to contact really to handle this. I hadn't experienced something on such a significant level, uh, d uh, losing someone like that. And... Uh, talking to some guys about it uh, this year, actually, junior year, I had let it kind of slide and it had taken sort of control of my feelings to a degree about my brother and about losing people. And it was always something stuck in the back of my mind because I never processed it. But one day I went to peer counseling and I thought, you know, that this, this could be something that could help out. And then I contacted a dude from and ended up talking to him on a personal level about it and about my life in general. And that opened my eyes up completely to the guys in my grade just by having that one conversation with this guy because it made me realize there's such a story to every person here. If it wasn't for Luke Massio, I would certainly not be talking to you today. It was in April of 2014 when I took Luke trout fishing on opening day. I was still recovering from the two strokes I had suffered in December and January, but I was feeling great. After getting Luke ready to go into the water, I put on my own chest waders, grabbed my rod, and out into the water we headed. Luke stayed close to the bank, in the water but close to the bank, while I made my way out to the center of the stream. After a while, I realized that the strokes had affected my balance and my ability to walk on the slime covered stones, but I wasn't gonna say anything. Then the first time I went to move, I lost my balance and fell in. Not having a belt around my waders at my chest, the waders quickly began to fill with water, making it impossible for me to stand up. I reached my hand out to push against the stream bed so I could keep my head up above the water but the water was too deep and I started to go under. Luke threw down his rod and charged out through the water to me. He grabbed me by the suspenders and pulled me to the shore where he helped me to kneel up and unfasten my suspenders so we could let all the water out of my waders. There was no one else around. So if it wasn't for Luke, I certainly would have died. After we beat uh, Springside Chestnut Hill, uh, to get to the state final. Um, that, that moment was super special for me. We had all the parents on the sideline. Um, it just meant so much to all of us. I got hurt with 30 minutes to go. I got punched in the head. Um, don't really remember what happened after. Mr. Raider tells the story of me like coming over and hugging him after we scored the winner and I, I don't remember it. Um, <laughs> but um, after, after the game, Jack Kay and I had a little thing going where during the state uh, the state run after we won I'd hop on his shoulders and we go for a little lap so there's a nice picture of us I'm on his back have my nose plugged. I walked in the hall one day and I saw Dayon playing chess with a freshman um, who I don't think he, I wonder if you knew the kid's name it's a really quiet kid that I happened to teach and it was like that moment was like the epitome of what like Haverford could be. Tuesday afternoon back at the library I think it's e-block uh, and we're all feeling good, and for some reason we just start singing for the longest time. And it just starts with one person, two people, kind of just singing the opening line, a little humming. And then eight or nine of us just start breaking out into singing, disrupting the entire library, and just, you know, showing everybody what's up. Uh, one day, so I was 
got my lunch from Chef Henry, passed through the line. And then, you know, when you're walking in a hallway with the air coming towards you, you kind of your eyes start watering up. Um, and it's like, uh, looks like you're crying. So that, that was me walking down the hall uh, in the cafeteria and my eyes were watering. Looks like I'm crying, totally not. But then in my head, all of a sudden, I'm getting really scared. Keep walking closer and closer to uh, some of the guys I had met my first week and the table's just completely full. I was like, oh my God, where am I gonna sit? Where am I gonna sit? And then my hero, Pierce Glavin, turns his head and he scoots a little bit to the left, pulls up a chair and he goes, hey Chris, you wanna sit here? And that moment kind of, just it just made my heart melt like, God, th this is amazing. I'm so glad I'm here right now. I think the moment when we did African drumming as a class, um, it kind of, to me, kind of taught me what service meant. I'm like, not that I didn't know what service meant before I was in second grade, but it showed me that like, when you come together as a class, and when you come together as like any group of people, you can do service and do it for a really good cause. I remember we were uh, doing the walk for water, second grade. Uh, so it was just after like spring break, like everyone was like, we're carrying two gallons of water, which for a little second grader, probably not the greatest idea. We're all walking around the track, and I remember like, no matter the speed or where everyone going, everyone made it around the track together. And I think and that's probably not, like we probably weren't thinking about that much. We did it for a great cause, but I think that was just like embodies how our class was as a people and as together, that we were just there for everyone from the beginning. I remember us collecting recyclables across the campus. We did it on all three levels of the lower school and then we would go through the different divisions. And you guys would take the recyclables, put them in those big blue trash cans, and we would run them up to that giant dumpster. I think it was like yellow and orange. But then I remember one day when I found a few of you in the dumpster with the recyclables. I don't know why you did that, but it really was a fun time. Sorry, it was great. Coaching the freshman basketball team. Guys in that group know who you are. It was a great, great year. We were Interact champs. Yes, somebody is keeping track of who is freshman uh, Interact champions, at least I am. We were 14 and three. It was so much fun. Um, you know, uh, it was so much fun coaching that group and spending time with that specific team. And I'd just like to say that I credit that group with the subsequent run that Haverford basketball went on to bring two Interact titles to um, the school. One, and I always associate this with your class, is uh, very, very humorous because you guys are very, very funny. Uh, I enjoy your sense of humor so much. And years ago when we did the Puerto Rico trip, um, you were the last class that were allowed to take phones and mobile devices. Um, after your class, we decided that it was better to not take those things because then it's less of a distraction for the boys engaging in the trip. Uh, but we were taking your phones at night to charge them and keep them out of your rooms. And uh, I remember Dr. Reich and I were taking phones and Mitchell Hark did not want to give up his phone because he was very involved in some online game. And I remember Dr. Reich saying, Mitchell, give me your phone. And uh, he, uh, Mitchell said, Dr. Reich, if I give you my phone, I'm going to run out of wizards. So to this day, if I ever want to make Dr. Reich chuckle or smile, um, I just imitate Mitchell Hark and I say, uh, I'm running out of wizards. Some man had held a plank for like eight hours. Um, I don't know, it was some obscene time like that. And um, I was like, no way, like eight hours, that's crazy. Like, I could barely hold a plank for three minutes. Like, a three minute plank is like really hard. And um, Matt McNucci, uh, is he in this interview? Is he, oh, screw that kid. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, he was like, he was like, what, dude? Like, a three minute plank, like, you could do that easy, like, right now. And I was like, whoa, like, okay, do it. And he was like, well, you, like, Nucci's like a pretty, like, transactional guy. Like, he doesn't have a lot of morals, right? And he was like, I'll do it for five bucks. And I was like, okay, like, five bucks. Like, what's five bucks? He's not going to do it. He's going to owe me five bucks. And Matt McNucci got down on the floor in the library, um, and there was, like, 20 kids around him. 
And by like two minutes in, he was like shaking crazy, like literally about to fall over. Um, but he 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 was he was. He, he persevered, you know. He he got the three minutes, and I'm, I was happy. It was definitely worth the five the five dollars. But I thought that that moment kind of epitomized the class, you know. One small thing sparking into like a huge into a huge group activity that everyone was watching, everyone was laughing at. Um, and of course, there was a little bit of competition because Nooch just wanted to prove me wrong. Uh, but yeah, that, that is that's that's some memory that that was stuck with me for a while. That was really funny. On the very last day of school. You know, come in and we're we're wrapping up the year and laughing and joking and giving some heartfelt comments and and I remember right at the end of that class, um, I think it was Graham Rantanen shouted out to the to the crew that we're gonna bring it in and we're gonna say double show on three and it was in that moment that. As a teacher, I, I felt like I was home. I felt like I was in the right place. And I, I, it was you guys that made me feel that way, that made me feel a part of the Haverford community. And that moment was so powerful to me. And uh, you know, we brought it in and as a class broke it down and I'll never forget that. I, I, it just, I think it truly marks um, what you guys, what you guys mean to each other, and what you guys have meant to me as a teacher in at at Haverford. I mean, the Malvern football game's got to be up there. It was awesome, just feeling the energy of like our whole class and grade, and you know, the Malvern fans kind of poured out out of there early, showing how you know we stuck with it to the end. Um, it was pretty awesome, and. Uh, you know, rushing the field, planting the flag, a lot of fun. Um, and just seeing how, like, excited everybody was. You know, it was a regular season football game, um, but, like, could have been the championship. In the past four years, football hasn't been, like, something that a lot of people go to, like, on the Saturdays. But this year, everyone kind of came together. And then it really stood out that senior day. That's, the Gents Club was packed, and uh, running out of the tunnel that day is probably my favorite moment from from my Hatford experience just hearing everybody like yelling and screaming mine's a little less happy actually um it's losing on episcopal uh, ea day uh that game was a very tough loss and i was obviously crying after as my Hatford career was coming to an end and i was looking around the circle and i was surrounded by all my brothers and even the ones that weren't on the team they were sitting there right next to me crying too and i think that's just like something that represents us and how close we are it's we are all friends, we all felt that loss, and we were all just like sad together. Probably the tailgates in the fall, where it, it started out as just like a little group of us, and then everybody, more people kind of started asking if they could come, and we were all like, yeah, sure. And it ended up being like a lot of people, and we made so many burgers, and we were just cool with it. It wasn't like, everybody, we were like, yeah, everybody come, come, bring your girlfriend, bring your brother, I don't care. One of the, the things that I'm probably never gonna forget is just the energy in Roscoe's room. Uh, I mean, all the all the boys, maybe on a crop top Friday, um, everybody wearing way too little clothing, but really excited about just being there and being together. Uh, just the energy is just unmatched. Uh, EA Day, junior year, when they held it on Friday rather than Saturday, um, everybody was there. You know, I looked out into the crowd before the race and I saw all my brothers, everybody in the class of 2020 right in the front row cheering me on before the race started to when I got back on the track. That last lap when I was ready to die, um, you know, I saw everybody cheering me on, all of my brothers, 2020, all my teachers, everybody just yelling at me to go faster, beat that guy. And because of that, you know, I ran my fastest race um, on the course, my fastest uh, kick probably. And, you know, I'll just always hold that memory really fond. So I love that. You know, it was a beautiful day. I wanted to experience the sunshine and I wanted to like, you know, see the boys do soccer because I wasn't able to go to a lot of games in the fall because of cross country. And as I entered, um, there was a group of, I want to say about like a dozen, maybe two dozen various seniors. And as egotistical as it sounds, they all started chanting my name and Johnny Songfeld um, screamed that that was my stat teacher. And I think what a lot of those students didn't really know is that I was at an incredibly low point in my life. And 
just even the smallest gestures of cheering me on or recognizing me or even just like having a conversation with me on a Saturday, I think speaks mounds because they have built those relationships with their teachers and they have fostered great, just great relationships that I, I, I can't express how thankful and how appreciative I am for that because that's why I do what I do. Do you have any parting words for the class of 2020? The class of 2020, um, thanks for being who you guys are. Thanks for being awesome. You guys are going to be missed. Um, we love you guys. We look forward to the day we can hang out and dap you up, give, give each other a hug, all that good stuff. Um, so, as you know, just keep doing you guys and, and be awesome. And, and I look forward to seeing you uh, in the future. Congratulations, class of 2020. You guys were tremendous. Uh, your class is a remembrance of what the Haverford School can and should do on a yearly basis. Take care, boys. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. I love you all, class dismissed. Thank you to the class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. You've had a huge impact on me. Thank you for what each of you has done for Haverford, each other, and for me. Thank you, class of 2020. Just, just would like to say um, thank you, class of 2020. Um, I honestly love you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'm so grateful for you guys. And I love you guys. Thank you, class of 2020. Can't wait to welcome you back on campus and give you the handshake that I'm going to miss from graduation. Congratulations, boys. You did it. You did a great job. And I'm going to miss everybody, but I look forward to seeing you when you come back to visit us. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you to the class of 2020. We are so grateful for all that you um, have done for Haverford. Thank you, class of 2020. I wish you all the very best in college and with all your future endeavors. Please know that you will never walk alone and that you will always have the Haverford community and your Haverford brothers with you wherever you go. And so 2020, thank you. I'm proud of you. I will never forget you and neither will the Haverford School. Stay forward strong. Thank you, class of 2020, for always supporting me and going through everything I'm going through alongside me, being, being my brothers. Thank you, class of 2020. I really appreciate everything that we've done together through my time at Haverford. Thank you, class of 2020. Fate made us friend, Haverford made us brothers, and may our paths cross again soon. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020, and thank you to all the teachers at Haverford School who made my experience unforgettable. Thank you. Class of 2020, for it's forever. I miss you guys. Thank you, class of 2020. I love you so much. Thank you, class of 2020. Love you, boys. Thank you, class of 2020. It's been the best four years of my life, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Thank you, class of 2020. Love you. Thank you, Haverford class of 2020, for everything you guys have all helped me grow as a person. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. It's uh, been a pleasure. It's been a blessing. Um, this isn't goodbye. But uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. Uh, you meant the world to me. I uh, love you guys for everything you've given me. And I, I hope I can give back to you and continue to give back to you. And, and everybody can stay close and continue that brotherhood. Thank you, class of 2020. Love y'all, boys. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. You mean the most to me. Thank you, class of 2020. You guys are my brothers. Thank you to the class of 2020 for being there for me. Thank you, class of 2020. Uh, one of the best four years of my life. Thank you, Heather, for class of 2020. I love you guys. Thank you, class of 2020. Thank you, class of 2020. Uh, you guys are always my family. Thank you, class of 2020. Love you, boys. Thank you, class of 2020. Appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you, class of 2020. I love all you guys. Thank you, class of 2020, for giving me the best four years of my life. Thank you, class of 2020. I'll always remember you. Thank you, the class of 2020 from the Haverford School. Changed my life for the better, and I wish you all the best. Go birds, go forward. Thank you, class of 2020. Schwinn out. 2020. See you later. Oh my God. <laughs> so by the time this video comes out, it will have been about 10 or 11 months since we were last all together. And not a day goes by when I don't think about the memories I made and the lessons I learned at Haverford. 
And I attribute a lot of that to the devoted alumni, the generations of faculty and staff, the board, and the parents. But I give most of the credit to my classmates. So I hope this video serves as a remembrance of the good times that we shared and as a reminder that your Haverford brothers will always be there for you in both the good times and the bad. So thanks for watching and thank you class of 2020.